Welcome to worship. We're really glad you're joining us tonight. Um, this is a historic Holy Week. It was on March 11th, 2020, that I got several calls that day from several doctors in our congregation saying things are gonna change. And one doctor went so boldly as to say, peace might need to close for a while. All worship might need to cease for a while. And I said, well, like how long? And they said, well, like maybe 30 days. Well, you know, it's been a whole lot longer than that. We spent last Holy Week outside of the church walls, but since that Holy Week, at that point, 16,600 people had died in our nation. And at this point, 550,000 plus some have died since then, and or, or up until this point of COVID. This has been something we could not imagine, something that we could not even wrap our heads around. And so as we enter this holy week, these holy nights in our congregation, these holy days, I want you to know that we do it with all that in mind. This is a historic time for us as we listen again to the story of Jesus' death and resurrection. So we're so glad you're here. There's a few people I wanna thank uh, as we begin tonight. Um, I wanna thank our musicians, uh, Elaine Mishler, who's been on the organ, uh, Jan Rakowski, who's on the bells, uh, and Sherry, who's been playing the piano, and uh, Jerry, who's been singing for us all year long. Um, grateful for their presence with us tonight. Um, David Petroff, who has been uh, the IT behind um, all the things we've been doing this year. Uh, I want to thank Bread Bakers. We had started out thinking that we might do First Communion in Mass tonight. Um, except that a lot of people just want to wait until we're in person, which is great, and we're hoping we're hoping, hoping, hoping that that will happen sometime in, in the next few months. Um, we don't know when. Uh, the holy moment was about that today. Um, but we're, we're wanting to do it where we can welcome everyone in our community to gather together again. And we look forward to those days. But tonight, we, Grace Olson was so excited about First Communion that she is receiving her First Communion tonight. And we welcome her to the Lord's table and cheer her on as she... Um, begins Holy Communion tonight. Um, and then we wanna thank the bread bakers, the bread bakers who baked mini loaves. Some of you might even have picked some of those up. And the, those people are M Marie Gillet, Carolyn Niehoff, and Jackie Erlinson. So thank you so much for all the people and all the things that you've been doing to make peace ministries and peace worship work throughout this year. And so as we begin this holy adventure tonight with Monday Thursday, Thank you for joining us. We continue with the opening hymn um, by Sherry and Jerry, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain. Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain, sinners ruined by the fall. Hear a pure and healing fountain, close to you to me to all. In a full perpetual time, 
opened when our Savior died. Come in sorrow and contrition, wounded, impotent, and blind. Hear a guilty free remission, here the troubled peace may find. Health this fountain will restore, those who drink shall thirst no more. Those who drink shall live forever, tis a soul-renewing flood. God is faithful, God will never break his covenant of blood. Signed when our Redeemer died, sealed when he was glorified. We continue with the confession and absolution. And this is the continuation of what has been a part of our Lenten season. And so tonight we begin with the confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And then we'll kind of or separate the absolution into two parts. The first part is the corporate or for the whole communion and community of Christ. And so we continue with that. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if we were together, gathering in the sanctuary, there would be a time when you could come forward and we would have a placing of our, our uh, hands on your head. And we would say individually to each one of you, in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. Amen. Peace be with you. And now the prayer of the day. Gracious and holy God, as we celebrate this holy day, as we remember your commandment to love one another as you have loved us, as we eat at your table and are nourished by your body and blood, lead us from death to life, from falsehood to truth. Lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust, Lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And our first reading today is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall be join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. And this is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. 
It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as perpetual ordinance. Here ends the first reading. And we continue with the gospel for this Monday, Thursday. And it talks about this, this evening, this gathering, this servanthood. And it's from the Gospel of St. John, the 13th chapter. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper... Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've set you an example that you are also, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. You know these things. You are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from the triune God who has created us redeemed us and continues at each and every moment to sustain us in our lives of faith. Amen. Today is Monday, Thursday. Monday, that word means mandate. This is the day we remember Jesus giving the disciples and thereby us the new commandment, the new mandate. The commandment is to love one another as Jesus has loved us. It supersedes everything. It is the one that matters the most. It is the center of God's agenda for the world and for each of us. We all have ideas about what Christ's love looks like. 
or maybe we don't. Maybe we cannot even imagine what such love looks like or feels like or sounds like in any sort of real way. With the news of the trial related to George Floyd's death or with the news of the mass shootings that have happened in the last few weeks or with the news of the Asian American woman who was attacked in New York City or with the ongoing pull and tug of mask wearing. Sometimes it's hard. I've been thinking about how we know such love, how we experience it in ways that matter, really matter to our lives. It isn't easy, this love, but when we are able to glimpse it, we know it and thereby can understand it and maybe live into it in real ways. A few weeks ago, the mom of one of my childhood friends died. Jean was not only Diane's mom, she was also 50% of the couple that were my parents' best friends. I've known Jean all of my life. She was 90, she had a great life. She loved and she was loved. The stuff the best stories are made of. I talked with both of her daughters. One was a childhood friend. Our birthdays are only a month apart. We grew up together. We shared a locker in high school. We rode bikes, we went to the same parties. We spent a lot of time together singing and laughing and talking. Her sister, five years older than us, always seemed much cooler than we were ever going to be. However, I ended up working with Sue in my first job after college, and we too grew to be good friends and had a lot of fun together. They asked me if I could do a eulogy. It wouldn't be in person. The service was family only because of COVID, and they are good Missouri Synod Lutheran people, so that female pastor thing was, you know, a thing. But they would love to read something, they said, if I would write it. So I was honored. And yet when I sat down to write, I really had to think about what I was going to say. How does one speak of a friend's mom, who is also my mom's best friend, in a way that does any justice to all that time, to all those years? I thought it so I thought about it for a few days before I really had to write it. I thought about the time we had been camping out at the Missouri River and the campers all got mudded in after a couple of rainy days. And we had to stay for a couple of extra days making the most of the food that was left by sharing it between families as a sort of potluck of leftovers. There was the time during deer hunting season one year when the two dads in our families were hunting and the two moms and all of their girls spent the weekend together, Jean signed up for a raffle for a car and she won, only to find out that the car was really this old bomb of a car, one meant for hunting, sort of. We all piled in one night to go out to eat because it was funny and somewhat fun. I think that was also the year that both of our families uh, got puppies while our dads were gone. I thought about how much Jean teased me when I went through my bib overall stage in high school. I was regularly caught up wearing blue, blue denim bib overalls. And I remember when my dad was dying of cancer and my parents could no longer go south for the winter in their mother home, how Jean and Lloyd didn't go either. They stayed home that winter to be with my parents. Lloyd took my dad out to ice fish for 30 minutes at a time as my dad was able. So what does this love of Jesus look like? I think it looks something like that, an enduring love, an unconditional love, a love that bears things and believes things and hopes things and just stays, has a staying power. So I began the eulogy by saying, as a kid, adopted into a family I wasn't biologically connected to, being welcomed, being included, being loved for who I was mattered so much to me. I had pretty amazing radar for detecting otherwise. And at the brick home, at Jean and Lloyd's home, I always felt those things, always. Even in my high school bib overall days. Truth is I was always a little quirky with my sense of fashion. I wore dark purple cords, a light purple shirt, white socks, along with red, white, and blue style Converse All-Stars. 
it wasn't simply that those things were all part of my wardrobe. I wore them together, which I thought made me look pretty fabulous. The Brick sisters kindly introduced me to colored socks, along with other options for what might look just maybe a little more in style. I went from there in the eulogy, including sharing this poem by Brian Andreas called Legacy, which goes like this. I promise you, not a moment will be lost as long as I have heart and voice to speak. And we will walk again together with a thousand others and a thousand more and on and on until there is no one among us who does not know the truth. There is no future without love. We have a long way to go in our world before people know the truth of Jesus' love and feel like they are living in it. It starts with us though. It starts with us understanding ourselves as people who are lovable, lovable as we are for who we are by God. And then sharing that sense of love and being loved in ways that others can love and be loved too. That is what we are called to do in this mandate, in this commandment, to love one another as Jesus has loved us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. We pray for all God's people according to their needs. We pray for people and their families all over the world that they may be strengthened and nourished in healthy relationships founded on love. Where there is pain, bring healing. Where there is oppression, bring justice. Where there is joy, bring words and acts of celebration. Where there is need, bring hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open us to see the deep hunger, the weariness, the exhaustion in our friends and our families and our neighbors and in the strangers we encounter every day. Help us to see every human that you have created through your eyes, to hear their cries through your ears, to bring relief to those seeking help with hearts softened by your love. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those among us or in our circle of saints who are sick or suffering in any way, bring a measure of healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For, for those among us who are grieving, bring the full comfort of your resurrection reality to bear upon those hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we carry lots of information inside us. We bear burdens that are hidden from view. As we gather as your people, move us to receive your bread and wine, your life-giving love in ways that we need it. And then empower us to share it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, gracious God, for Grace Olson, who is being officially welcomed to your table tonight. It matters. This gift you give us matters. Thank you for it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these prayers and every other sigh we offer beyond articulation to you. Please mend us and your world with your holy mercy. Amen. And this is the time when we come together um, uh, as we are going to gather at the table with the bread and the wine. This time when uh, we as the church universal are reminded of the love and the care uh, that Jesus Christ, Son of God has for us. And so we have bread and we have wine. And we remember the words of institution. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was, was betrayed, took bread. And he broke it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us gather together and say the, the Lord's Prayer, and then we will continue with communion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we will partake of Holy Communion together, the body of Christ, given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for me. The blood of We continue with the blessing. Fed with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
May, the, may we love the world as you have loved us. Amen. And now the post-communion prayer. Gracious God, you have nourished us with your body and blood. You have given us a mandate to love one another as you have loved us. Empower us now to move through the remainder of these holy days with eager anticipation of what comes beyond the suffering, death, and resurrection. Move us beyond all that is to bear your love to the unlovely places of this world. Amen. We continue with Psalm 22, um, which will end our service tonight. But we also want to share with you that um, the 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 Good Friday service will be posted at 11 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. So you can watch it any time after that. And then we continue to be um, uh, live stream on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, Easter Sunday will begin at 9 a.m. Uh, with a festive worship. And we will be recording that and it will be available <laughs> later if that's not a good time for you or your family to watch. But we will be live at 9 a.m. on Sunday. Tomorrow's service is anytime you want it after 11 a.m. Thank you for joining us tonight. We continue with Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me love me to scorn, they curl their lips, they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him, if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is here. And there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a pot's heart. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in. A band of evildoers circles around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh my help, 
hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted.